Hey, what's up? This is Hyun Seok Yoon, and welcome to another numerous model builder tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to use a logistic growth model to show you how the same concept of a system can be expressed differently based on different time frame it is founded on. There are generally two types of time frame, uh, continuous and discrete. And continuous time frame is what we've been working on when we, we're making the ex exponential population growth. It uses different equations to express the flow of the system. Uh, discrete time frame, on the other hand, is when a time is in a series consisting of a sequence of countable quantities. And the models under discrete time frame is expressed under what is called as difference equation. And discrete models are useful because it can match directly with periodically collected data in a daily or monthly setting. Alright, so now let's go ahead and make the logistic growth model first in a continuous time frame. And then we'll go over to the discrete time frame. Um, so logistic population growth model is opposite of the exponential growth model in that the population is resource limited and therefore density dependent. And so in a density dependent population growth, the population is going to be curved as the density increases and reach a carrying capacity. And some other assumptions in the model are going to be that the population size is going to be positive or real as before and the intrinsic growth rate is going to be constant. Alright, so let's go ahead and build it in the numerous. We're going to call this x and let's try some different stuff this time. Uh, we're going to press stock plus flow and it automatically connects the flow to the stock. And for flow, we're going to put the equation r times x times oh, r times x times 1 minus x over k. So you have to manually put time the multiply, multiplier every time. And for initial, we're going to put 10. And put some terms here. We're going to call this k. And the value is going to be 50. This term is going to be called r and the value is going to be 0 0.3 alright so it's connected we're all good the method is going to be rk4 for solving differential equation and launch uh, we forgot one thing gotta put a graph component and this time we're going to put a new one called table it's basically a table that yeah pretty same um, we're going to add x and we're going to launch again. Now we have a graph and a table. Uh, you can span this out a little bit to make it visible. All right, now we're ready to run. And there you go. Uh, resource limited population growth. So that's that. You can check this out too, as it, how it progresses in numbers. And yeah, pretty simple. And now let's go ahead and build a discrete model. All right, for this model, we're going to use the difference equation made by two British fishery scientists named Ray Beberton and Sidney Holt. And the equation was built in the 1950s. And here's the equation, uh, which is it's also known as the Beberton Holt equation now. And so let's take apart the equation a bit. So R is the intrinsic growth rate, right? And K is the carrying capacity, like we went over before in the continuous time frame. And gamma is the scaling factor, so that's new. And you can see that when the X is below K, uh, X over K term in the denominator is going to be less than 1, and is not going to make the denominator very big. The population next step is going to grow. However, as X goes over K, uh, the fraction is now going to go over 1 and way above depending on the scaling factor and if the denominator exceeds the intrinsic growth rate R, the next time step is going to have lower population number. So that's the mechanism of how resource dependence works in this equation. Alright, so let's go ahead and make the model. Call it X again. And here what we're going to do is we're going to press something called sequence and basically, this is necessary for making a di discrete time frame models. So when it's in sequence, each time step, um, the stock assumes the 
value of the flow. So stock is going to assume the next time step, which is going to be x of t plus 1. So let's go ahead and put the difference equation. It's going to be r times x over uh, 1 plus. And here we're going to some, use something different. Mass.pow x over k and comma g for gamma and close the parentheses and semicolon. So all the equations we, we've been writing in the panel has been a JavaScript language and math.pow here is one of the libraries, math libraries that um, able to write exponential, exponential term. So x over k is going to be the term here and the g is going to be the exponent. All right. And the initial population is going to be 10. And uh, instead of term, I want to put sliders this time. So we're going to make three sliders, r, k, and g. And let's connect these by, if they're not ever connected and all those values, all those terms are written here, uh, you just, all you got to do is just finagle a little bit and it connects, it connects the sliders to this flow. All right, so minimum value is going to be zero, maximum value I want to set it to five for now. Step is going to be 0 0.1, initial value is going to be 2.5. So k is going to have maximum value of 50 and 1 initial value is going to be 50. g we want to have minimum, minimum 0, maximum 5, step going to be 0 0.1 and initial value say 2. Uh, yeah, yeah, 2. Alright, so method we're going to put discrete and let's not forget to put graph this time. I'm going to save the table, but you can do it if you want. And yeah, let's go ahead and run. All right, so there you go. This is how it looks like. And if we drag this down to two, it gets more smoother. And but what if we put it up to four? And then we see this little oscillatory behavior. Uh, so this kind of oscillatory behavior can only be seen in discrete models because the difference equation never says that population can go over the carrying capacity. But it does tell the population to go down once you go a certain amount of overboard the carrying capacity. So here in the graph, we see that the population goes over fifth the carrying capacity. So the next step is lower. And as it goes lower, the carrying capacity, like below the carrying capacity, it comes back up and then it goes back down, goes back up to cap carrying capacity again, and then it basically converges into the carrying capacity eventually. So yeah, that's that. And now let's go ahead and I want to try different values of gammas and R, intrinsic growth rate. So now let's try um, 3.5. And R is going to be 2.5. If we run this, uh, we see something very interesting. Let's drag this out a little bit. Yep. Um, when, when it doesn't um, reflect the time value, just stop and reset and continue and run again. And it does it. So, interesting. So the oscillation kind of expands, amplifies as the time step goes on and it kind of resides in a stable cycle. Alright, so what if you want to make stable cycle the whole way? Um, then we could try the value 3, gamma as 3, r as 3.5 and we're gonna run. And there you go, it's basically stable. Uh, we could put it to 1000 to see if it doesn't converge at the end. I mean, we still don't know for sure, but it makes it more evident. <laughs> so 
there you go. It's basically a rectangle now. And let's go ahead and try R of 2.7 and no, G of 2.7 and R of 3.8. And let's bring this back down to 100. And here we see a dampening oscillation. Uh, I'm going to decrease a little bit to make it more visible. All right. Yeah, so the oscillation dampen, dampens and converges to a capacity as time goes on. All right, I'm going to try one last thing. And that's going to be G of 4 and R of 3.8. If you run this, now we see this crazy pattern, right? And I'm gonna put this to 100. And it, you can see that it's very erratic and unpredictable. So this is what is called chaos. Um, so chaos is when the value in each time step becomes unpredictable, and, but it's within a finite zone. And it depends very much on the initial condition that you put the population on. So yeah, that's that. It's pretty interesting. And so you could literally go into any values on the slider and explore different kind of behaviors this model can get. That And that's the beauty of numerous. You can basically explore very easily. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And we use logistic growth. In this tutorial, we use logistic growth system to explore how the models can be built in different ways depending on what kind of time frame you're using. Um, so I hope this was very informative for you and in the next section now we're gonna go a uh, step further and we're gonna go explore spatial models. It's gonna be a very interesting topic. Hope you're excited as much as I am and I'll see you next time.